Hi, and welcome to day four of our Spring Break at Home Camp. I'm Leslie Higgins, Director of Education for the United States Marshals Museum. Thanks for joining me today. This week, we have been talking about marshals in Indian Territory. So today, let's learn more about Indian Territory itself. Indian Territory was created as a result of an act of Congress called the Indian Removal Act that became law in 1830, about 45 years before the period we've been talking about. This act said that the president at the time, Andrew Jackson, could negotiate with the Native American tribes living in the eastern United States to move to new land further west. This act was hated by the Native American tribes, as it was a way for the American government to force the Native Americans off their land and allow white settlers to take them over. The tribes worked together to try and stop it, along with other people from other states and missionaries living among the tribes. But they were unsuccessful, and their worries came true. The government, particularly Andrew Jackson and the southern states, seized on this opportunity to take lands away from the tribes. They began forcing the tribes to move west. Over 25 million square miles in so several southern states were taken away from the native people. Indian removal resulted in what was called the Trail of Tears. You might have heard this phrase before. Approximately 100,000 Native Americans were forced to pack up everything they owned, leave their ancestral homes, and travel hundreds of miles to make a new home in what is now Oklahoma. Can you imagine what it would be like to be told you must pack up all your things, leave your home, and go live somewhere you've never been before? Remember, this was before cars. They walked or took horses and wagons. It was a horrible journey. Thousands of people died along the way of starvation, exposure, and disease, earning it the nickname the Trail of Tears. The Choctaw were the first tribe to be removed, followed by the Seminole, Creek, Chickasaw, and Cherokee. Small groups were able to resist and remain in their homelands, like a small group of Creek in Mississippi and a small group of Seminole in Florida, but most were forced to leave. These tribes became referred to as the Five Civilized Tribes. In all, over 30 tribes were sent to Oklahoma. After settling there, each tribe organized itself as a nation, like a country, and set up their own laws, constitutions, and governments, and had a certain amount of independence. But later in the 1800s, during the time period we've been talking about, the government would once again come after the Native Americans' land. In the 1890s, the government started claiming tribal lands for the construction of railroads that were becoming more widespread across the country and opening tribal lands to white settlement, which had previously been against the law. The tribes assigned lands became smaller and smaller. In 1905, the five tribes submitted a request to Congress to create a separate Indian state, but Congress denied their request. Then, just two years later, in 1907, Oklahoma was made a state. The word Oklahoma is actually a Choctaw word that means red people. The Native Americans were considered citizens of the state of Oklahoma and the United States of America. Their land allotments now meant nothing. Despite this, and later other unfair treatment by the U.S. government, the tribes have continued to survive and to hold on to their culture and heritage. Almost 40 tribes st still have headquarters in Oklahoma today, and a court case in 2020 gave the tribes back some of the control over the lands that were historically theirs. The United States Marshals Museum works closely with the five tribes and is honored to help tell their story. In fact, the five tribes are placing a monument to Native American law enforcement, called Light Horsemen, on the museum grounds. The statue is set to arrive soon, and we can't wait for you to see it. Your activity today, you get to become the curator and do some artifact analysis. In your camp packet, you'll find an artifact analysis worksheet and a replica arrowhead to look at. Artifact analysis is just a fancy way of saying we're going to look at something closely and see what we can learn about it. This is a great skill to have when you visit a museum and see all the cool artifacts they have. Looking closely at objects and answering questions about them can help us learn more about the world around us. 
Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoy the activity and have enjoyed learning a little bit about Indian Territory. I hope you'll join me for our last day of camp tomorrow. Bye!